In this video, we're going to go over direct fuel injection, injector removal and installation. We're going to be using the All German Auto direct fuel injector kit, which has all the components that you need in order to remove and install the injectors. This ATA direct fuel injector kit does not only apply to the N63 BMW engine we have here. It applies for all the models that uses the BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen, and also Porsche. And just to clarify, here we have the engine out of the vehicle, so we can easily show you what's going on. It is of course completely different with the engine installed in the vehicle, and there is some severe room restrictions of the lower part where the fuel lines goes into the high pressure fuel rail. So we're at the point where we need to remove the injector lines and also the high pressure line coming from the high pressure pump going down to the injector rail. For this, there are existing special tools which consist of a 17 millimeter kind of crow's foot socket and also a 14 millimeter crow's foot socket. However, with the angle of the injector rail and with the socket sticking out, they're almost out so far they're contacting the firewall in the vehicle. Here we have developed a special little socket in both a 14 millimeter and a 17 millimeter size to accommodate the fuel lines. What's unique about the socket is the self-flexing ability. When you push here, the socket flexes and it goes around the corner and straight on to the injector line by pushing on this lever. As you can see, it is almost impossible to get the socket to go on in this position because it is contacting the firewall and there is no room to install it without removing all the components. With the self-flexing socket, it allows you to bring the tool right down, pivot it, and slide it straight onto the nut. Another important feature of the self-flexing socket is because it stays in alignment, the torque stays very accurate. Here we're verifying that with two torque wrenches, both set to 10 Newton meters, which happen to be the torque for the 14 millimeter fuel line. Here you can hear the sound and the vibrator on both torque wrenches going off at exactly the same time. No torque is lost. Here we have the wiring harness for the ignition coils removed, as well as the loom that has the injector connectors and cam sensors off the engine. To remove the lines on the top, very important, use a 13 millimeter wrench to hold back onto the injector so that the injector doesn't twist while loosening up the line, while holding back, loosen up the injector line with a 14 millimeter wrench. On the fuel lines, on the high pressure rail, that's a different story. The special tools that they have available for that are very large in size, and with the restriction of the firewall only being inches away, it is very, very tight to get to install the socket in the vehicle, and especially to get onto the socket and tighten and loosen the connections for the fuel lines. As you can see on the self flexing socket, by pushing on this lever, the socket flexes on its own around the corner. This makes for a very easy installation in the tight quarters in the car. So when you install the socket onto here, you can see the distance away from the valve cover is very small. In addition to that, the self flexing socket is stabilized with the two links, so there's no torque lost when torquing the lines going back together. Also included in the kit is the 17 millimeter self-flexing socket. That same principle pushes the lever, the socket flexes, and that goes on to the high pressure line coming from the pump. It also has a very little standoff compared to the factory tool. Here I'm using the socket in combination with a self-locking extension, which makes it really nice. You cannot drop the flexible socket and lose it into the ending compartment. Once you have the lines loosened up, you can spin them off by hand and easily spin them off on the bottom as well. Now remove the line from the engine. Once the line is removed, make sure to install a protective cap so no dirt can enter the system. The yellow fuel resistant caps are for the 12 millimeter ports and the orange caps are for the 14 millimeter ports. These can be purchased as a kit also on our website. Remove injector hold down bracket.
Now to remove the injector, remove the protective cap and install the injector puller. Thread it on by hand to the top of the injector. At this point, make sure to pull up in a straight motion to bring the injector out. If the injector has been in the vehicle for a long time, this may require some force. A quick note in regards to the puller, you can reverse the sliding portion like this, which gives for a higher installation height. This makes it a little bit nicer to use in the areas where room allows it. However, if there is interference in the back, like to engine cowling and stuff like that, you can flip it back over again and have it more tight and compact. Once you remove the injector puller from the injector, reinstall the protective cap so no dirt can enter the system. It's very important that you have a very clean work area and surface. I like to place a white piece of regular paper to avoid any contamination from the work surface to get onto the parts you're working with. That goes for the injector seals as well as the coupling rings. The coupling rings you can take right off by hand by pushing out on the little tanks like that. The injector seal you have to remove with the injection removal tool. Place a tool right over the injector like this and push straight down. This will cut the seal in half without making any contact to the injector. This is very important. Now wipe the area where the seals were installed with an absolutely clean lint-free rag. Take great care at no point to make contact to the injector tip. This very simple injector seal removal tool replaces a lot more complex BMW tool. I find this one very difficult to use. It's uh, kind of hard to get it to cut the seal and I feel that I have to use a lot more force to get onto the seal where uh, this tool requires very little force. You just simply center it on top of the ring and gently push down. This cuts the seal and without making contact to the injector at all. Not to mention a lot more cost effective. To install the seals, start with going on with the coupling ring until it snaps into place. Again, make sure you don't make contact to the tip. To install the injector seal, use the mandrel in the kit. Again, very important, keep the workspace and the injector seal very clean. Make sure your fingers are clean as well. If you're doing multiple injectors and you're coming back and forth from the car and you get your fingers dirty, wipe them off and make sure they're absolutely clean. I do not like wearing gloves for this. This tend to get caught between the mandrel and the seal and we definitely don't want any debris or any pieces of gloves stuck between the seal and the injector. To install the seal onto the injector, hold the injector in one hand. Again, make sure nothing makes contact to the tip of the injector. The mandrel is designed so it can't touch the center. Without making contact with your fingernails, but just your fingers, push the seal onto the injector like so. Now we need to shrink the injector seal down in size so it can be reinstalled into the cylinder head. Start out with the part having the number one engraved. In case you're using TIS or all data or similar kind of descriptions for the work, it also has a corresponding part number engraved on the face. So starting with number one, and note it has one groove, so very easy to identify from the side as well. Push it over the seal and the injector, and again, without making contact to the tip of the injector. Flip the tool over till we have the number two. Push the tool over the injector to shrink the seal, and pull back off. Now, switch to the tool that says number three. Push it on to the injector. You want to keep this tool on until you're ready 
to install the injector in the cylinder head. If you have it out of the tool for more than 10 minutes, the seal will continue to expand and you must reinstall the tool before installing the injector into the cylinder head. I cannot stress enough how important it is to keep your work area and parts clean while working on them. Do not use any kind of lubricant or grease or anything like that when installing the seals. It must remain clean. Should your work surface get dirty, just remove a piece of paper and back to a fresh, clean start. Once you're ready to install the injector back into the cylinder head, remove tool number three and insert the injector back into the cylinder head. Make sure the hole for the injector is free of debris and dirt. Push firmly down on the injector until it is fully seated. Once the injectors with the new seals are reinstalled in the cylinder head, install the bracket with the bow facing up so the bracket holds the injectors down in compression. Start the bolt by hand into the cylinder head. It is important that at this point you only tighten the bracket by hand. You want the injectors to still be able to move slightly to make fitment of the injector lines easier. Remove protective caps and install injector line. Remove orange 14 millimeter cap and install high pressure line to pump. Initial torque on the 14 millimeter fuel lines is 10 newton meters on both the injector lines and on the 17 millimeter pump line. Once the initial torque of the 10 newton meter is done on the injector line and the pump line, then tighten the injector hold down bracket to 14 newton meters. For the fuel lines, the final torque is 23 newton meters. Very important is that the flexing socket does not make contact to any other components surrounding an engine compartment or fuel line on the engine that could interfere with the torque. This is very crucial since loose fuel lines can cause fuel leaks that can lead to very dangerous potential fires. And on the 17 millimeter high pressure line, torque to 30 newton meters. When you come to the final torque on the injectors, Make sure you hold back with a 13 millimeter wrench on the injector body to prevent the injector from rotating while torquing the 14 millimeter nut to the 23 newton meters. The fact that the self-flexing socket is very compact and stays very close to the engine can be a real big benefit. On this side, towards the rear, where it's very, very tight to the firewall, you can access it easier. On the other side, where the steering shaft is very close, on most models, you can access it without having to remove the steering shaft. This HEA direct fuel injector kit has many, many uses. Not only if you're doing the N63 valve stem seals, like the engine we're demonstrating on right now, but in order just to do a leaky valve cover gasket or a lot of other repairs, you have to remove the injectors in order to remove the valve cover once is in, the engine is installed in the car. So it's quite common to have to remove and reinstall the injectors. So it has many different uses. To order the product in this video or to download specific instructions for this tool, visit atatools.com. There you'll also find all the other products that we have to offer. If you want to stay up to date on all our products and latest tools coming out, please subscribe to our YouTube channel Thanks for watching.